Alright everybody, welcome back to another edition here of Friday Night Smackdown. How are y'all doing? My name is Dominic, of course. Behind the commentary table, and we are live and sold out right here in Corbin, Kentucky. On this go-home edition of Friday Night Smackdown for the upcoming Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And it's going to be a hell of an episode, alright. We are apparently kicking it off with Sheamus. Versus John Cena and it seems though Sheamus is coming out here alone more on that in a bit However, we also have the Intercontinental Championship on the line as Eric Young will be taking on Drew McIntyre and also let's not forget the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view also has two distinct Elimination Chamber matches one of them will feature one of the two women competing in this Elimination Chamber qualifying matchup in a few moments following this individual contest as Mickey James is set to go up against Kyrie Sane. Both women lost their chamber qualifying matches. Let's see if they can get the job done tonight. However, one man who's looking to get the job done tonight is that man, Sheamus, as he's going up against John Cena, the man who previously challenged for the WWE title against Kevin Owens at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, but was unfortunately on the receiving end of a loss as Kevin Owens is walking into the Chamber pay-per-view with the WWE title in his match against Johnny Gargano. However, right now, ladies and gentlemen, Sheamus, who is looking out towards John Cena, apparently has decided to come out here on his own. Now, I'm not entirely sure why, but we have seen the bar Cesaro and Sheamus definitely not on the same page over the past few months, basically, since they lost their tag team titles to the New Day. It seems as though Sheamus and Cesaro have just been two combustible elements ready to explode as they basically did at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view in the Royal Rumble matchup. Sheamus eliminating Cesaro before immediately getting eliminated in his own right by EC3. Sheamus and Cesaro then just proceeded to brawl around the arena in an absolute chaotic mess. And it seems that those Cesaro and Sheamus, they haven't been on the same page at all. Okay, they've been competing in tag team matches, sure, but they haven't really gotten the job done. However, tonight, Sheamus is perhaps looking to change his losing ways in a one-on-one -on -one match against none other than the former top champion here in the WWE. Of course, I'm talking about that man, John. Cena, a living legend in his own right, obviously, okay, he's made waves throughout not only the wrestling scene, but the pop culture scene as well, and tonight, Sheamus is looking to tear down this Hollywood celebrity as the bell rings, let's get into it. Sheamus in the purple, white, and gold John Cena, the typical shorts, let's go. As Sheamus now immediately having the upper hand there with the headlock. Okay, he transitions, but John Cena now transitions beautifully into a headlock. Okay, a lot of people don't particularly look at John Cena as one of the top competitors here in the WWE, and I have to say that I disagree with that statement as Sheamus just uses his raw power to take down the man. One, no, not even a one count. Okay, John Cena, he's a bit of a brawler, I'll admit that. He's not particularly one for knowing these Greco-Roman holds. However, I will say this, as you can see there, his striking is incredibly effective, as you just saw with the punch to the lower back of Sheamus. However, John Cena, as he's matured, he's definitely learned more how to proceed with these technical wrestling holds, and you're seeing that right now. However, John Cena is now challenging Sheamus. Let's go. Let's go for the fight, and Sheamus now, oh, trying to trade strikes with John Cena. You never want to be in a striking contest with the former WWE Champion. However, right now, John throws him into the corner, and Sheamus now, he ain't looking so good as the DDT connects. And now, oh, he goes for a stop. Sheamus, however, gets up, immediately charges towards Cena. Cena, however, trying to strike back, but instead, he gets a punch right to the gut. And now Sheamus throws John Cena halfway across the ring. And there you see Sheamus. Okay, perhaps getting a bit cocky in his own abilities tonight. But, oh, well, I was going to say, perhaps he had a reason to. However, John Cena, okay, perhaps taking that moment of cockiness, taking that moment of arrogance by Sheamus, 
to perhaps try to heal oh to lick his wounds to heal himself up but instead he gets brought right back down by one half of the bar if I can even still say that at this point but right now John oh throws down the Celtic warrior sends him into the mat now and this already chaotic episode of Friday Night Smackdown of course main evented by oh one of the most chaotic members here on the roster Eric Young as he looks to challenge Drew McIntyre for his Intercontinental title but right now Sheamus looks to be absolutely decimating Cena here with these punches right to the chest over and over and over and over again okay Sheamus absolutely beating the hell out of John Cena tonight okay the punches right to the chest over and over again Okay, he's definitely going to be feeling that one later tonight. Okay, his chest going to be red. It's going to be swollen following all, I believe, 10 of those punches to the chest. But right now, what I do know is this. Sheamus has to get Cena back into the ring. That's exactly what he's trying to do here. Oh, God. It's not the chest once again collides. This time with the ring apron, the hardest part of the ring, as is common knowledge here in the WWE. But right now, Sheamus, as he's waiting for Cena to get up, Seems to have something to mind here. German. Oh, he went to go for a German suplex. But John Cena trying to fight back now with the strikes. Trying to fight back now and Cena trying to survive against the Celtic Warrior. Hits him with the DDT, dropping him on the top of his head. No. Oh, wait a second. John Cena sees this as an opportunity, perhaps. Cena now has him. Cena now has him here with the STF. He's tapped out so many competitors. He's won so many matches, so many titles with this one hold. And Sheamus now, he's in the middle of the ring. He's got nowhere to go. John Cena just wrenching on the upper back, wrenching on the neck of his opponent tonight. Sheamus could tap out here. Sheamus could tap out here. Oh, no, but his raw strength gets him out of that STF maneuver. And John Cena and Sheamus are both still in the fight. But Cena now trying to fight back as hard as he can. Instead, he gets a punch right to the face for his troubles. No, wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, God. Drops him on his upper back there. Drops him on his neck. One. Two. No, and only a two count again. As Sheamus can't seem to get the man and keep the man down. Because now Sheamus seems to be waiting for something, seems to be charging up for something here. Taunting the crowd. Oh, runs towards him and said Cena ducks it. And connects with the AA! One, two, three. Attitude adjustment gets the job done. Sheamus perhaps too cocky in the closing moments of that matchup. Okay, charge, charging up. Okay, revving himself up perhaps. Okay, taunting the crowd there in the corner before immediately running towards John Cena who ducked underneath and caught him with the attitude adjustment out of nowhere and as soon as you see that AA as soon as you see John Cena prop his opponents on his shoulders well then you know it just lights out for whoever is on the receiving end as John Cena here on Friday Night Smackdown to kick off the show gets the job done Sheamus not looking too good not looking good in singles competition and apparently not looking good in tag team competition as of late. Okay, he needs to somehow dig down deep. He needs to somehow figure out what's wrong as John Cena feels like everything is all well and good as he celebrates this victory here tonight on SmackDown as we move on now to the rest of the show. Okay, we've got a lot to get through here tonight. Um... Okay, well ladies and gentlemen, there you see him, he's the rated R superstar, none other than the SmackDown general manager. Okay, the man who made his triumphant return at the Royal Rumble matchup, at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Okay, well, in that case, what exactly is Edge doing out here? John Cena standing in the ring, curious as, alongside all of us. I'm not entirely sure what Edge is doing, but...
Whoa, it seems as though this legendary rivalry continues! Of course, Edge saying to the world, announcing to the world that he is back and he's ready to return to the to in-ring competition and that he's going to be returning at WrestleMania and it seems as though he's found his opponent, none other than perhaps the only man besides Christian that he knows like the back of his hand. It's going to be Edge versus John Cena. The legendary rivalry continues at WrestleMania. Well, well, after that massive announcement... <laughs> Later on tonight to get back to the show, Robert Roode is going to be continuing his rivalry with Johnny Gargano that they had around No Mercy time earlier this year. But that's not all as Daniel Bryan following the shocking debut of Andrade Cien Almas attacking Daniel Bryan backstage to kick off a recent episode of SmackDown. Daniel Bryan has something to say in regards to... To Andrade, Cien Almas, but of course that's not all, okay, I've been mentioning it the past few moments. The Intercontinental Championship is on the line as Drew McIntyre is looking to take on his chaotic contender in the leader of Sanity, Eric Young. However, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to turn your attention over to the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Now, of course, at that pay-per-view event, we will be seeing two Chamber matches, one exclusively from Monday Night Raw with the Universal title on the line. The second one being a cross-branded number one contenders elimination chamber match as there are going to be six women in the chamber fighting, duking it out for a shot at either the Raw or SmackDown women's title depending on what they choose following their respected victory six women are going in only one will be getting a shot at wrestlemania however tonight these two women mickey james and alexa bliss are voting for mickey james to join that chamber match as mickey will be going up against Kyrie sane here tonight and there you see alexa bliss of course miss money in the bank she always has a trick up her sleeve but tonight mickey james she doesn't have her sleeves she has her fists she has her feet, and she is ready to battle here tonight against Kyrie Sane. Of course, both women lost their respective Elimination Chamber qualifying matches over the past few weeks, with Mickie James losing to Ember Moon, and that woman right there, Kyrie Sane, losing to Sasha Banks. And of course, Kyrie Sane, she has been going, so she's been basically dealing with a two-on-one war here on SmackDown as she has been dealing with the SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley and of course her best friend Sasha Banks. Okay, Kyrie Sane recently getting a shot at the SmackDown Women's title. Sasha Banks, however, took it upon herself to, well, basically make sure that Bayley's title stays around her waist as those two women battle in a main event matchup but instead, Kyrie Sane was thrown off the top turnbuckle by Sasha Banks. The referee saw it clear as day, and it was a disqualification on behalf of Kyrie Sane. But it doesn't matter that she technically won the match because Bailey, via the champion's advantage, retained the title. And you know that Kyrie Sane is still absolutely pissed off following that loss. Had a chance, oh, to become champion. But right now, she could be trying to earn herself another chance at becoming champion if she can just win this matchup and win the Elimination Chamber as she takes down Mickie James. Alexa Bliss, Miss Money in the Bank, watching on the outside as the veteran here on SmackDown in the women's division, Mickie James, is looking to battle here. However, right now, Kyrie Sane throws her into the corner, and you can already see... Okay, she is incredibly pissed off with the hard strikes here tonight. Oh, the slap right to the chest. However, this time, Mickey James counters. Hits her with the elbows over and over again. Hits her with a punch to the face. Back suplex. Oh, but there you see the agility of Kyrie Sane. And now, oh, whoa. Now jumping on her here with the loot that's press. Okay, just raining down the punches. Raining down the fists right to the face of Mickey. Oh, but it seems as though Alexa Bliss apparently... Sharing her feelings here tonight with Kyrie Sane. Okay, having a few choice words. And Mickey James looking to take advantage. One, two. No, and only a two count following the distraction by Alexa Bliss, her protege. However, it seems as though Mickey James 
I believe they do have a protege to mentor style relationship. Sure, they're good friends backstage, but you got to think that Mickie James is trying to secure the future of the women's division with Alexa Bliss. And I have to say, even though I don't particularly like a lot of the actions by Alexa Bliss, I will say that she is a very impressive competitor. But so is Kyrie Sane as she takes down Mickie James with the Hurricane Rana. And now James is not looking too good. And Kyrie Sane sees it as an opportunity. With the drop kick right to the stomach, right to the chest. That's now, oh god, just stomping away on Mickey. Here tonight on SmackDown as she waits for James to get up. Okay, Kyrie Sane. A bit more ferocious here tonight in this match. Okay, those vicious stomps as you just saw. Okay, the drop kick to the corner. But right now, Mickey James is trying to survive, trying to fight, trying to. Oh my god, go! Four. Go into the Elimination Chamber match. Okay, Kyrie said, okay, I'm sorry, I paused there. Went to go for that spinning back fist. Oh, and Mickey James countered it and has turned it into a very impressive neck breaker. Going for the cover now. One, two. She could be going into the Chamber match, but not quite yet anyways, as Mickey James gets up following the kick out by Kyrie Sane, who is also looking to join that Chamber match, obviously. Over there you see Mickey James taking a moment to perhaps stroke her own ego as Alexa Bliss watches on the outside. Kyrie Sane looking to make her pay for it. Picks her up. Alabama slam! Oh my god! It looks so damn brutal every time. Okay, there's a reason why Hardcore Hollywood use it as his, as his finishing maneuver. Okay, the Alabama slam absolutely brutal, whipping her opponent into the mat. However, Mickey James, she gets up and immediately, she gets up and immediately hits her with a mid kick. One, two, no, and only a two count out of nowhere. Hitting her with the kick right to the face. Okay, the back of her head, the, the upper back of Mickey James just collides with the mat and Kyrie Sane here tonight. Somehow kicks out of the mid kick, and my god, now we've got a fight! As now it's Mickey James who gets taken down with the spinning back fist this time, connecting right to the jaw. And there you see Alexa Bliss clearly worried, clearly having something to say here tonight to Kyrie Sane. As now, oh, wait a second, Mickey James, Mickey James has her here. One, two, no, th three, it's over! What? Well, I was expecting a kick out there, but Mickey James nonetheless. Okay, following the spinning back fist, gets up, charges towards Kyrie Sane, gets the pinfall, the roll-up pinfall attempt, locked in deep apparently. As there you see in the replay, because she has her here, the small package, and Kyrie Sane was unable to kick out as Sane loses here tonight. And sure, perhaps Mickey James's distraction played a big part in the conclusion of that matchup, but nonetheless, Mickey James will be going into the elimination chamber matchup. Well, it seems as though we're going to be getting a dream match 
scenario at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. It's going to be the first ever NXT champion, Andrade Cien Almas, versus the former WWE champion in Daniel Bryan. Okay, it's a WrestleMania-worthy match, and we're going to be getting it a month early at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Okay, it's going to be very technical, it's going to be very hard-hitting, and I can't wait to watch it. However, another match that I can't wait to see is this upcoming match, as Robert Roode is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Johnny Gargano. Okay, now what's the story of this matchup? Well, for Robert Roode, it's all about revenge, it's all about redemption, it's all about getting his frustrations out with Johnny Gargano. You see, at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, Robert Roode was immediately... Eliminated from the Royal Rumble match by none other than, you guessed it, Johnny Gargano, okay? In fact, Johnny Gargano eliminated him so fast that Robert Roode broke the all-time elimination record. Robert Roode was only in there for exactly one second before being eliminated, breaking the record previously held by Santino Morella. And if I'm comparing people to Santino Morella, you know that they do not feel very valued here in the WWE. Sure, I've always liked Santino, but you can never really see him as a top champion, now could you? Robert Roode, on the other hand, he has been a former top champion. He's been World Heavyweight Champion. However, speaking of top champions, let's look at Johnny Gargano and his side of the coin, why he wants to be in this matchup. You see, Johnny Gargano, he feels a bit overlooked going into his match at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. He is challenging, after all, for the WWE Championship, and not many people are talking about it. And Gargano now... Oh, wait a second. Oh, gets a punch right to the back of the skull. That's rude now, immediately. Oh, attacking Gargano. Okay, Gargano, he feels a bit overlooked, and sure, I understand. Okay, Kevin Owens, he's been kind of dealing with the New Day for the past few weeks, not really dealing with Johnny Gargano, even though Gargano promises, oh, to perhaps steal the WWE title away from him as he goes for the cover here off the backstabber. One, two, no, and only a two count. Okay, Johnny Gargano, however, immediately gets up, goes for a running attack. Robert Roode goes to the back, however, goes for a belly-to-back suplex, perhaps, and said, Johnny Gargano runs towards him with the neck breaker. However, Robert Roode immediately gets up and said he gets a back elbow there by Gargano before a kick. And now Johnny watches, oh, as Roode rolls to the outside, but he looks to join him, flies down onto Roode with the dive to the outside. Okay, I can't even mention anything else about the WWE title match right now that Johnny Gargano will be having at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view against Kevin Owens because he's just, oh, all action tonight. Flies into the ring, goes for the cover off the spear. One, two, no, and only a two count. Okay, a dive to the outside, spear through the ropes, the Insiguri. Gargano is on fire, and the match has just started. However, oh, Robert Roode takes him down with the Bulldog. Because now he looks to continue the punishment with the fist just hammering away on the back of Gargano. Oh, and then a stomp right to the stomach. Now we can get back to this, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Roode, of course, a former top champion, but he knows that not too many people are taking him seriously right now following that incredibly quick Royal Rumble elimination on behalf of Johnny Gargano. And Gargano now of the neckbreaker. One, two, no, gets the shoulder up there, and Robert Roode seems to be arguing with the referee there following the neckbreaker. As Roode. Oh, wait a second. Goes for another cover here. One, two. No, and only a two count. Now, Robert Roode knows, as I was just saying, that not too many people are taking him seriously. And you got to think, if he was to somehow beat the number one contender for the WWE title, then perhaps many people would see him as a threat. Two. No, and only a two count. Getting the shoulder up does Gargano once again. And Robert Roode now, clearly pissed off. That Gargano, oh, seems to keep on kicking out as he punches him there. Okay. Oh, goes for that Bull Nelson spin-out slam, perhaps. Instead, Gargano gets countered. Robert Roode stopping on the foot before throwing him to the outside. Getting some space between himself and Gargano. And well, there you see. Robert Roode not one to typically hide his ego. Okay, there's a lot of comparisons between Rude and Triple H. Okay, they have a very similar moveset, very similar attitude. And you're seeing it right there with both men having a very similar sized egos. However, tonight, Johnny Gargano out of nowhere 
One, two, no, and only a two count. Looking to let that ego be his downfall, perhaps taking a breather on the outside before coming in and trying to knock the breath out of Robert Roode with that spear right to the gut. However, instead, Roode, oh, there you see, goes behind him and is fighting back. However, Gargano doing the same thing as both men. Oh, are in a bit of a stalemate here, a bit of a back and forth as Gargano gets a kick to the gut. And, oh, wait a second. The glorious chant and the glorious DDT to follow it. One, two, no, and only a two count again. Root has used that same maneuver on so many competitors to get the job done, and yet Gargano, okay, he's still got some fight within him somehow, getting the shoulder up, and you gotta think Kevin Owens is watching this one, hoping that Gargano suffers some sort of a serious injury. However, he ain't injured as he gets up immediately, taking down Robert Root. As he takes him down, throws him across the ring, says this is an opportunity. But instead he just gets slammed by Rude, but Gargano is still fighting with the discus elbow right to the face, right to the jaw. One, two. Oh, well there you see, however, Robert Rude saves the matchup for himself. Grabbing onto the bottom rope and Johnny Gargano clearly annoyed at that sight. However, Robert Rude with an expert precision realizing, oh, Exactly where he is in the ring. Okay, that ring awareness perhaps saving him from a loss following that discus elbow. As wait a second, he picks him up with the rude bomb connecting, picking him up, turning into a neckbreaker. One, two, three. No, and he gets the shoulder up again. Robert Rude, a former top champion here in this industry, he has used that same maneuver to get a few titles under his belt. However, right now, Rude waiting for him to get up. Goes for a kick, and always again, Gargano catches the leg, he catches the leg, catches the leg again, and now wait a second, he's got him here, the Gargano escape, Rude just fingered this away from the, from the ring ropes, and he just can't reach, as Gargano wrenches on the glorious one, wrenching on Robert Rude, he's got him, he's got him, oh no, instead he gets a brutal, Knee right to the back of the skull. However, Johnny Gargano, following the Gargano escape, perhaps could use that as an opportunity to get in this matchup as he goes for the springboard, connecting with the DDT. As Robert Roode now gets turned over here, one, two, no, and only a two count. As Johnny Gargano here tonight, Johnny wrestling is doing just that. Okay, of course, the last time these two men met was at No Mercy, where Johnny Gargano promised that at the expense of Robert Roode, he would return back to Johnny Wrestling, and perhaps he has here tonight. However, Gargano goes for a kick instead. Oh, he gets a kick there, right to the gut. Does Robert Roode, and now these two men are brawling back and forth here. The kick right to the leg again, and Gargano now just continues the fight. Robert Roode, however, doing the same damn thing, as now he's got him here. Another pinfall predicament. One, two, three, and it's over! Well, I can't say that wasn't a bit of a disappointing ending. Okay, very back and forth here tonight. Robert Roode and Johnny Gargano pulling out all the stops here on SmackDown. And yet Robert Roode gets the job done. Okay, hitting him with everything. The glorious DDT, the Roode bomb. However, you can't say the same thing about Gargano. Hitting him with the Gargano escape, the suicide dive. Not one, but two spears through the ropes. Both men pulled out everything in this matchup. And Robert Roode... He gets the victory via a roll-up pinfall attempt, and Gargano, oh, whoa, hold on a second. Kevin Owens there you see showing absolutely no respect to Johnny Gargano saying that he doesn't even need to attack him and of course I'm not particularly one for seeing a Kevin Owens attack however nonetheless Owens just perhaps playing some mind games telling Gargano that 
that he's not even worth it. And after that loss to Robert Roode of all people, Johnny Gargano, you gotta think that a lot of negative thoughts are going through his head. However, we're gonna find out if those negative thoughts will affect him this Thursday, October 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view will be taking place. We've got a lot of hot matches to get through on that card. However, ladies and gentlemen, right now it seems as though the Rated R Superstar Edge has something to say in regards to the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems as though it's a night full of massive announcements. Not only did we hear earlier on from Edge that he will be competing against John Cena at WrestleMania, not only did Daniel Bryan announce that he will be competing against Andrade Cien Almas at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, but also at that Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, as we just heard, it seems as though Bayley will be defending her SmackDown Women's title against Kyrie Sane. However, with that being said, Bayley will not have the champion's advantage like she had in their previous encounter, which, you know, led her to retaining her title, but also, Sasha Banks will be banned from ringside. Well, Bayley now perhaps Feeling the odds stack against her, but in my opinion, that just completely evened out the playing field. At the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, we're finally going to see who is better. Will it be Bailey? Will it be Kyrie Sane? Only one way to find out. Tune in to the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. However, right now, it's time for our main event of the evening. It is the Chaotic Leader of Sanity versus... The Scottish Psychopathic Champion in Drew McIntyre. The IC title, the Intercontinental title's on the line, baby. This is your main event of the evening. Eric Young versus Drew McIntyre. And if it's anything like their last encounter in the ring, which was admittedly a few months ago, then I can guarantee you this is going to be a knockout, dragout brawl here tonight. Of course, Eric Young basically kicking off this feud by attacking Drew McIntyre following his previous title defense. Okay, Drew McIntyre went one-on-one -on -one with Braun Strowman, the man who, well, a few weeks ago, lost to the fiend himself, Bray Wyatt. And, well, we haven't really seen Braun Strowman since that encounter with Bray Wyatt, but nonetheless... Okay, ever since Drew McIntyre beat Braun Strowman with the count-out victory, both men crashing through the barricade to close out that edition of SmackDown a few weeks ago. Drew McIntyre, ladies and gentlemen, was immediately met with 
Eric Young, okay? After surviving Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre was quickly dealt with by Eric Young, okay? Attacking the Intercontinental Champion, and tonight, the Intercontinental Champion is looking to perhaps repay the favor, okay? McIntyre, he came out here after Young's match with Xavier Woods, okay? He tried... As he screams out in that Scottish fury, he tried his best to beat the hell out of Eric Young and all of the members of Sandy. However, the numbers game was just too much for Drew McIntyre. And right now, Eric Young will be going one-on-one -on -one with Drew McIntyre. McIntyre will finally get his hands on Eric Young. And perhaps, following tonight, Eric Young will get his hands on that. The Intercontinental Championship. Well, there's only one way to find out, ladies and gentlemen. It's the main event of the evening. It's Drew McIntyre. It's Eric Young. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a brawl. And I can't wait to see what happens. With one of the richest prizes in WWE on the line. As there you see, Drew McIntyre looks down at the Intercontinental Championship. Hands it to the referee. Hands it to our official here tonight. Eric Young getting a good look at it. And perhaps all in tonight, you'll get a better look. When he beats Drew McIntyre. However, Drew McIntyre is not going to let that happen. McIntyre, he needs a victory. Eric Young, he also needs this victory. It's for the all-important Intercontinental title. The bell has rung, and let's get into it. McIntyre immediately, oh, immediately saying, let's go. Let's fight. And Eric Young charges towards him. One, no, only a one count on the Scottish psychopath, on the champion, as Eric Young Looks at McIntyre, goes for a punch, but instead he gets a punch to the face. And now here we go, McIntyre and Young going blow for blow here, trading strikes as you probably expected this match to kick off with as these two men are known for their, oh, their incredible strikes here on SmackDown with the punches. They kick immediately on the split here as he charges towards him once again in the corner. This time, however, McIntyre quickly moves out of the way. Okay, McIntyre clearly having the height advantage, the power advantage. Eric Young, perhaps, a bit more intelligent in that ring. And, of course, I'm not trying to call McIntyre dumb. However, Eric Young he is a veteran of this business as he gets sent into the mat. Goes for the cover. One, two. No, and only a two count. Okay, Eric Young. He is incredibly creative. He's incredibly chaotic. And, of course, he is incredibly intelligent inside the confines of the squared circle. As now, oh, wait a second. Eric Young, there you see, flips out of it. And now here we go, charges towards him. And the punch is connecting the Luthez press on McIntyre. And now McIntyre rolls to the outside, and that's exactly where you don't want to be when you're fighting Eric Young. That is his domain. That is where he is most comfortable. Okay, sure, he may be comfortable inside the ring, but on the outside, he's both comfortable and perhaps even more dangerous. And you're seeing it right now as he's using the environment to his advantage. And now he bounces his skull off of the off of the post there. McIntyre in the black, yellow, and red coming out, of course, with the white strap, the Intercontinental title. And it seems as though Eric Young going for a pinfall to take home that title. One... Two. No, and only a two count. Drew McIntyre gets the shoulder up here in our main event of Friday Night SmackDown. Oh, wait a second. Connecting. One. Two. No, and only a two count. A bit of a shout out to the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. Of course, only a two count. Okay, didn't quite hit that maneuver to perfection. He hasn't obviously perfected it like Kurt Angle has over the course of his career, but McIntyre gets up and immediately uses that raw power to his advantage. But there you see, Eric Young tries to get up. Drew McIntyre, however, moves out of the way, and Young and McIntyre are now trading blows, perhaps, with a punch to the face again by, oh, by Eric Young. And oh, God, look at this. Come on. Like I said earlier, using his environment to his advantage was absolutely unnecessary by Eric Young, trying to choke the life out of McIntyre before trying to Beat the life out of him with the punches and, of course, a big kick right to the gut just for good measure by the challenger. Okay, Eric Young oh, with an unorthodox style here. He is a bit of a brawler. However, he still has an unreasonable amount of strength. Okay, a lot of ingenuity, a lot of intelligence here on SmackDown. And you're seeing it here tonight as he is absolutely laying waste to the champion. 
And you gotta remember, Drew McIntyre, the man who beat Kevin Owens, who is also incredibly dangerous in his own right. Okay, the WWE Champion, the current WWE Champion, one, two, no, and only a two count. Of course, he beat Kevin Owens to gain the Intercontinental Championship after Kevin Owens was holding both the IC and WWE titles. But there you see McIntyre just swinging for the fences, and he hits a home run with a punch to the face. However, there you see Eric Young trying to fight back with the back elbow connecting right to the jaw. And Young now goes to throw him to the outside. Drew McIntyre realizing exactly where he was throwing him into, of course, the waiting arms of Wolf and Dane, but instead, Eric Young props him up on his shoulders with the Sandy Driver. One, two, we have a new champion. No, we don't as he gets the shoulder up. That's so now Eric Young, there you see, looking down at Drew McIntyre, wait, waiting for him to get up here in our main event of the evening. A main event that I would argue has been completely dominated by Eric Young. However, Young trying to fight back, kicks him in the gut. No, wait a second. Wait a second, connecting with the spinning neck breaker. Connecting with the spinning neck breaker. Whipping him into the ground. It's over. One, two, three. No, and he gets the shoulder up again. How in the hell is McIntyre fighting? Okay, I was mentioning it earlier, McIntyre beating Kevin Owens to gain the Intercontinental title. And as we've seen here on SmackDown, he is perhaps one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous man here on SmackDown. And Eric Young, however, perhaps following tonight, wanting to show the world that he may have taken that spot here, as he is absolutely laying waste to the Scottish psychopath. However, Drew McIntyre, he's got a lot of heart, he's got a lot of determination within him as he gets out of that spinning neck breaker and now goes for, oh, goes for an Irish whip. Instead, Eric Young reverses. And now, with the punches, with the strikes, and McIntyre just falls down hard, falls down on his face. Absolutely not looking too good here as the Intercontinental Champion, but instead he throws him across the ring. Okay, throwing him away. From Sandy, perhaps a smart strategy as he takes him back into the ring with the suplex, showing off that raw power. But there you see McIntyre rolls out of the way, or, ro or gets out of the way, sorry, of an incoming Eric Young. But Young now drops him right on his upper back. As now the Intercontinental Champion Drew McIntyre. I know I keep mentioning it, I know I keep saying it, but he is not looking good in the slightest. Oh, has a punch to the back, however, by the champion. No, wait a second. Perhaps this could be an opportunity as he takes down Young. He takes down Young, but there you see Eric Young just immediately getting up, trying to fight back. Okay, taking a massive maneuver there by Drew McIntyre, dropping him on the back of his on the back of his head, on the back of his neck. But there you see Eric Young trying to fight back here tonight. Oh, and perhaps sharing his his emotions, his feelings here tonight with the Intercontinental Champion. But there you see McIntyre picks him up. Putting him on the top, Turbo Gabbas looking to make him pay for it. So now these two men now, perhaps, could be turning this into a bit of a back and forth affair with Drew McIntyre. Oh God, showing off the raw power. Keeping him up there, slamming him down, going for the cover. One, two, no, and only a two count again. So there you see Eric Young, he gets up. McIntyre, however, gets up right behind him. Oh, but instead, he gets a kick to the gut, does Young. As now, following the massive superplex, Eric Young kicks out. And perhaps that could be the turning point in this matchup. Or perhaps this will be. Kicks him in the gut, catches him there with the Future Shock. The Future Shock DDT. One, two, it's over. Three, no, and only a two count again. And Drew McIntyre, admittedly, he hasn't. He hasn't quite taken how Eric Young, okay, he hasn't quite dominated this matchup as Eric Young has throughout the entire course of the fight. However, nonetheless, that Future Shock DDT is typically a match ender, and Eric Young somehow kicked out as he goes for a kick to the gut. Instead, he gets a short arm clothesline by the champion, and McIntyre, oh, wait a second, McIntyre, he hit him with the Future Shock, perhaps looking to hit him with the Claymore. One, two... Three and it's over. Drew McIntyre out of nowhere in the last few minutes of the match absolutely turned the tide toward his favor. 
hitting him with the superplex off the top, holding him up there for quite a long time before hitting the superplex, showing off that raw power. Eric Young, however, perhaps showing off his intelligence, showing off his game plan in this matchup, beating the hell out of Drew McIntyre, but McIntyre nonetheless, Future Shock DDT, Claymore kick combination, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't think anybody is kicking out of that one, as there you see, BAM! The Claymore right to the face of Eric Young. Who can stop the Scottish Psychopath? I have no idea. But nonetheless, McIntyre retains his Intercontinental title as we close out this episode, this go-home edition of Friday Night SmackDown. Be sure to tune in to the Elimination Chamber event.